Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is December 1st, 2017. My name is Lynn Marquardant, and I'm your host. I'm so glad you could join me. Today, yes, we are doing a filler type of project. Whenever I have had a really busy week, I pull out my Dear Jane book because I have a lot of work to do. So that's what we're going to work on, some blocks from the C row of Dear Jane. If you aren't familiar with Dear Jane, this is the book I love. I actually am turning it into a diary and I write about my, my blocks I make. I started it in 2012, my version of Dear Jane. My goal is to have it done by 2020. Sue Norton out there is gonna beat me as are a lot of you from around the world are also doing it and are going to beat me, but that's okay. I'm enjoying the process, right? Thank you for being here. Grab a project or just a magazine or watch something on TV. Plus have me on. I'm so glad you could join me. It's Friday. We're also going to talk about something that happened today in history. Back in 1990, 150 feet below the sea. So that's a little tease. We'll talk about that. Um, and that's, a, that's about, oh, we're also going to talk about Christmas. Christmas and my special offer. I still do have some spaces. If you have a Christmas top, quilt top that you would like me to machine quilt, I'd be happy to do it. I have a lot of edge to edge patterns. In fact, I wanted to show you a couple and you get $20 off if you send in your top or drop it off or I can come pick it up. You get $20 off the cost of the, the quilting. So here's one that I really like, it's a holly. That's one example if you happen to have a holly type of Christmas quilt. And then another Christmas theme here is, and these are my two jelly roll race quilts for the niece and nephew. These are jingle bells. So just a few ideas. Again, we could get any color thread, although we are running close if you need the quilt by Christmas. We probably can't get any thread in the rainbow, but I have a, I have a fair number already. And we can pick any design in the rainbow. So that is machine quilting, $20 off. To do Dear Jane, I wanted to show you first, if we go to C in our book, I wanted to show you the one block that I started at Missouri Star, and it's the C4 Tic Tac. And you'll see the inside is, is paper pieced, and then the outside I still have to do the applique. And it turns out that the next couple of squares, C5 and C6, also are going to have some hand applique. So I thought tonight I would get them ready and then if hopefully if we have time we'll go to c8 to hanny's crown and that's more of a paper pieced pattern i use my dear jane software i love that and i've printed it out for like the first top half of this quilt so the yellow represents what i've done so far and i have a lot to do in fact so this made my heart stop i was finally looking at my sheet of and I'm sure you can't read that, but how many blocks I need to do each year in order to meet my 2020 goal. I have to do two corners, which I've not done, and 15 triangle blocks. So the triangles are these outside blocks. 15 of them. That, I need to get to it. So, anywho. Let's put that back there and not pay attention to that. We're going to be pulling all-nighters doing our dear Jane. Okay, so that's, again, C4. Let's pull out C5 and C6, and you'll see what I mean by these being just easy applique. Okay, so C5, let's do that first. I'm going to put this aside. And you'll see I have my nice board. How are you all doing? I hope you've had a good week. Okay, C5, Eye of the Cyclone. Okay, now this. <laughs> oh, and here's the other thing I've, I did. When I was at Missouri Star Quilt Company, I bought this charm pack. 
42 pieces, five inch squares, and it's a sapphire star, sky, five carat gems. And look at all of these blues that I'm gonna use in my Dear Jane. So, for example, I could even choose to do one of these reverse appliques. So I could use a blue background and then just applique on some white. And I think I might do that. Um, so that means I need white triangles. And I just arrived back from DC. I actually flew from Maryland today and beat some of the traffic out of Boston, but I, I got home and I visited with Bob and the band for a little while and then came upstairs. So I really haven't, I didn't prepare at all. But again, that's why this Dear Jane is so good. So here for again, let's pull up this picture again. You know, I know it doesn't look like it, but sometimes I do prepare before I come on Fibercast. <laughs> but tonight is not one of those nights. Okay, let's see. Eye of the Cyclone. Okay, so here the white is the background and the yellow orange is the front. I'm going to do the reverse, which means I need four white pie shapes. So, oh, let's put this out of the way. Four white, oh, hot. Okay, four white pie shapes. And these really don't have to be perfect because I'm going to do needle turn applique. So I am going to cut two at a time. There's one, two. Three, four. Probably tonight what I'm going to, or right now what I'm going to do is show you how I fold over and baste these pieces. I don't know how you do it, but I do like to baste my pieces. And this is a big quarter inch um, turnover. I like Actually, for applique, I like about an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to trim those down. But let's get all four of them done first. Okay. I'm going to get my iron right over here hot again. So, oh, I know what else I wanted to tell you. Last week, we worked on this quilt behind us, the disappearing hourglass. And remember I put the green around as one border and then which which I liked and then I put the pink I don't like that as well but it makes it bigger and do you know what I discovered is somehow I got oil on the green and the pink and it turned out that I had a bottle of sewing machine oil right down here and when I was sewing the green on and sewing the pink on it got spots two spots, like the size of quarters. So I don't think you can see either of them. They're either covered up or up out of the screen behind me. So that one is stalled a bit. I'm going to have to either applique something on the spots or cut down both of the trim sizes, which I don't want to do. But sometimes, you know, those things happen, right? So... What I'm going to do here, since this is going to be my background, I'm going to fold it into fourths and iron it so that I can see the center. If it were really a light color, I would actually trace 
the block onto the onto the backing but since it's really dark instead I've ironed it that way and then and then I'm going to cut these down all four of them so so I have more like an eighth of an inch to turn under which is a waste of fabric I should have <laughs> done this on my pattern but okay so now I loosely place them where they're going to go so it's going to go like that and like that it's going to look like a, a nuclear signal and that and that so there's the first part of the cyclone and then hmm, I have to look at this again okay no they're all the same so here's the second piece and this one I'm going to trim down to an eighth of an inch first I hope that's making sense. You know what I didn't say? If you're out there and you want to share what you're working on, send a picture or send a note to lynn at simplycolorful.com and I'll read it. We always like to hear who's out there. So see how I'm down to an eighth of an inch rather than this is still a quarter of an inch. So, okay, now I need four of these. Same gig. Oh, have I had some good food in the last 24 hours. If anyone is in Tyson's Corner, go to Eddie V's. It's a steak and seafood restaurant. And we, oh, it was delicious. I had the most delicious hors d'oeuvres, shrimp hors d'oeuvres, and then salmon for dinner and with sides of uh, asparagus. And, oh, I know. Um, oh boy, macaroni and cheese with truffles on top. That was divine. And then for dessert, we had chocolate lava cake. We had bananas foster that comes with it, all the flames. We had tiramisu. We had these berries with fresh whipped cream. Oh, it was very good. Anywho, let's draw this on. And, oh, let me tell you where I went in downtown D.C. Washington, D.C., they lit the national tree last night, so the traffic was rerouted in lots of places. But I had a meeting at the Willard Hotel, which was really very fancy and beautiful, all decorated for the holiday. And, in fact, when I left, they had, because I had to go back out to Virginia for dinner, um, they had live carolers in the lobby. It was lovely. So that's nice to know that Washington is, is decking itself out for the holiday. And it was remarkably mild. I mean, it could have been snowing or rainy and sleety, and it really wasn't. It was a nice night. So where have you been this week? There are two pieces, and then here are two more pieces. And now I'm going to pull out my needle from my needle book that I made a few years ago. Remember that? I already am thinking of improvements, so this I may... I may upgrade my needle book because it's too floppy for me. And I made one for Karen and I sent it to her. So KB, we may be getting new needle books sometime. It's just too floppy. I think I could put some heavy cardboard or linoleum, piece of linoleum, you know, and make it, and I think maybe a zipper or something. I don't know. Like I have time to do that. Okay, so what do I do? 
And I shouldn't be using white, but it's what I had just then. Is I based my pieces. I turn over the eighth of an inch and I do a big running stitch. And this is where, you know, do you believe this is the last month of the fourth year of us doing this? And I should, we should start to set some new goals, some new milestones. I'm so proud of us that we keep doing this. I'm proud of the friendships that we've made and um, amongst each other and between us. And so next year, maybe I can really commit, and I know I'm a big talker, to doing Facebook Live and somehow having a camera overhead, because I think that would, I like to watch that. And that might be a nice addition. So happy December. Okay, so there's one piece that I've hand done, and then I don't break it off. I just put it down here, because this is all, all this thread is going to be cut away eventually. But now I loosely baste it right onto my background, like that. And then I'm not even going to knot it because that's just going to get pulled out. And now I'll do the next one. And what I might even do is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm even just going to pin it right now and move on to cutting the next one because this is the type of thing I can do right with Bob down while we're watching TV. Okay, so there's going to be the first part, and then these And they're going to look big to you because they're not basted. And these are directional. So because I cut them out multiples at a time, I really am going to have to do it redo a few. Some of them you see the backing. Okay, so this is C5. And I'm going to put this aside for more handwork. There we go. And hmm, I can't cut anything to put in my diary. Well, that's okay. I'm just going to say something like What am I going to say? I'm going to say um, today is December 1, 2017. Uh, used dark blue print for background from Sapphire Sky. And then that's good. So now we're going to go to C6. This is Ashley's Aura. This will be even easier. Oh, I love these squares. So see this one? This one I might mix up and start with a white background and just do the applique of those four pieces. And what are we going to pick? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm do something subtle oh you know what we could do though this might be kind of neat we could do a background in a blue oops and 
applique in a darker blue. I like that. That'll totally mix it up. People are going to say, where's the white? I'm going to say I didn't feel like doing white. Oh, and I want to welcome our new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you're not by any chance a subscriber, make sure to go to youtube.com slash simply colorful and just click the button, subscribe, and then you'll get an email when we go live. Just helps you find, find us and remember us. You know, sometimes you're just chilling or you want company while you're sewing. That's what we're here for. We're not training. Clearly, <laughs> um, we're just a bunch of quilters getting together and keeping each other company, which it's time for me to go check the email. So see how I just, I ironed that again, and that's where I'm going to put my other pieces. But before I go any further, who is out there, and how are you, and where is my big screen? Get the big screen. I must admit, just like last week, the place is a mess behind the curtain here. There isn't really a surface that's clean. I have to do something this weekend. But I've been busy. Like, I got both these quilts done. I'm still working on my Tim Natar. And we'll get it cleaned up. Hey, 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 Sue Norton. Speaking of Sue out in Chicago, my dear Jane buddy, she says, hi, Lynn. I'll be watching tonight. Hi. Just wanted to share my row H blocks. I'm on C, D, E, F, G, H. Still need to be sashed and added to the rest of the quilt. She says, I've been on vacation since before Thanksgiving, so I've had a lot of time to work on these. Okay. Really have only made five in this time frame, but I'm in the zone. Oh, that's good. I love when you get in the zone. Hope you had a good weekend planning on a great weekend. Thank you, Sue. I'm downloading your picture right now. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Those are great. Ah, oh, love it. Those are going to look so well together. And look at this. So. I like how your lights and your darks, all the lights aren't the same pattern. Can, every, can you see that? They're different prints. I love that. Oh, well, I hope you have a good weekend too. And Carol, hi, Carol is working on Ringo Lake. She says hi to Lynn and Fiber Casters. I hope that you've all had a good week. I hope you've had a good week. She says, I finished the nine patches for clue one of the mystery on Ringo Lake. She says, tonight I'm working on the flying geese units needed for clue two. I only need 200, she says. I have cut out loads of triangles and finished about 25 units. So still a few to go. Yours, Carol, in Yorkshire, England. Oh, as usual, your colors pop and you get contrast, those are stunning. That's gonna, I already know that's gonna be a great quilt. I love the pumpkins, look at the pumpkins. Hey, who's there? Why, oh, hello, KB. KB says, I'm here, hi everyone. She says, now that it's December, can we put up Christmas lights? Yes, yes, you can. I can't wait to see what you do. Have other people put up their lights? KB, you heard that the lights behind me here are, I don't know if you can tell, they're yellow, they're not white. I made a mistake, I bought four boxes of yellow lights. Oh, yay, I'm glad you're out there. Hey, Carol, Carol, my sister-in-law, she says, hi, Lynn and fiber casters. Thank goodness it is Friday, TGIF. She says, I am working on binding the quilt you quilted for me recently. Oh, isn't that fun? Are you at the hand quilting stage or are you still sewing it on? Oh, happy quilting, Carol O. 
So nice to hear from you. Hey, Lima. Lima says, hi, Lynn. So glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're out there. She says, I'm not quilting, but rather working on farm ornaments. Ooh, how neat. Glad to have your company. She says, we started Dear Jane at, Jane at the same time, and I only have seven squares done. Oh, Lima, that's funny. We did it over in Sarah Burt. Um, I was going to say Birchman. Isn't that funny? Sarah Kokanowski's place, right? Over at her warehouse. I remember those couple of days we met. <laughs> and in fact, aren't you doing batiks? I think, if I remember right. Well, ornaments are really fun this time of year. That is great. I'm so glad you're out there. Keep on keeping on. Kathleen, hello. Kathleen says, happy Friday. I'm watching but not sewing tonight. With the applique blocks, can they be done with raw edge applique? I'm not a fan of handwork. I'm working on making Christmas gifts. Have a nice weekend. Absolutely, Kathleen. This, in fact, if you look at some of Carol Norton's applique, you might be able to call that raw edge, but she does such a nice job on on tacking it down i think now correct me if i'm wrong sue but see that corner diamond that is just raw applique with a zigzag over it and it works it's great here's another one so you definitely i think whereas look at this how'd you do your hearts oh same thing and it's stunning so those are also they might be wonder under down but then they're machine applique around you can do anything you want. Don't you love that? All week we have to answer to our bosses, but quilting, we don't have to answer to anyone. That's kind of nice. Okay, one more, and then we need to get back to making it. Jennifer. Why, welcome, Jennifer. She says, hello. I'm a new viewer. Oh, good. Welcome. She says, I found you by doing a search for help with my dear Jane quilt. Ah, she says, I live in Oak Ridge, North Carolina. I have two boys, she says, four and six. I quilt, sew, knit, and paint. Oh, welcome. Ah, oh, she says, right now, that's a lot, with two boys under the age of six. She says, right now, I'm working on my baby Jane. I just started row D, and I finished all the paper piece sections in row A through C. Oh, good. I'm still slowly working on the hand applique blocks. She says, I've enjoyed watching your show over the last few weeks. You're so energetic. It's nice to have someone quilting with me. Oh, Jennifer, it's nice to have you out there. Welcome. And send pictures of your dear, your baby Jane. I love it. Oh, okay. Again, send in pictures or anything to lynn at simplycolorful.com. I'd love to show them. So let's get back to C6. And I printed that out too. Now I could do it the old fashioned piecing way, which I guess I could try. No, applique will work out just fine. So what I need to do is cut out just four petals. That's what I like, you know, this, um, this pattern, each, many of these blocks can be done many different ways. And the, the author of this book, Brenda Papadakis, teaches classes on how she does Dear Jane, and there are all sorts of notes floating around about variations in how you can do each block. Just FYI, so there's no right or wrong. In fact, I definitely, I think I wanna do something to make it my own. Maybe one block will be different or. Okay, so now I have that and I'm going to, for the sake of time, I think what I'll do is, this does not have to be precise.
there are two with quarter inch seams so I'll take a bigger chunk when I base them I'm feeling kind of kind of smart <laughs> proud of myself for thinking up this idea of getting a charm pack what do you think maybe you've already been doing it but this way you get little snippets of lots of different patterns that all go together so I'm kind of psyched about this charm pack it was $8.95 I didn't get it on sale okay so and this I can still make one and a half inch squares for KB and send it to you. Oh, Chris supplied all sorts of things KB for you, including some one and a half inch squares she found in her stash. So, I, being the ever frugal one, I said wrap it up for Christmas, but she said no just to give it to you. So I'll do that. Okay, so. Oh, so what happened in 1990, I'll give you another hint, in Europe, 130 to 150 feet below the water surface. You know what it was? And let's just say it started four years earlier. <laughs> I can't wait to read it to you. And now you're looking. And I have to tell you, this is when you feel old, is when you read on the History Channel about something that happened, and you remember when it happened. <laughs> uh. Hi to Kelsey, if you're out there. Hello, pumpkin. And Jean and Chris and Lima and Joyce, Kathleen and everyone at the Marathon Quilters. Okay, so where does this go? Okay, so now they don't really touch either, so they're way out there. I also don't want them to fall off the square okay where's that has everyone gone out to tomton farm speaking of ornaments that lima is making go out to tomton farm and see these fabulous pictures of the animals that they are saving up at the rescue farm. Lima, the one of the horse that is kissing you on the head is adorable. Take a chance on the raffle quilt. I don't think that's been raffled off, right? And then there's a Christmas tree there that they are adorning with ornaments, I think based on contributions or donations. So they do wonderful work up there. They've saved, saved many an animal and giving them a wonderful home. Again, that's Tompton Farm and Sanctuary. I think that's right. T-O-M-T-E-N. Way up north in New Hampshire on the border of New Hampshire and Vermont. Okay. This will be worth the wait because it, it is going to be pretty to have this dark blue on this light blue. <laughs> Another one. Hello, who 
Who's there? Aww. KB says, thank you, Chris. And no wonder the charm box is always half full. I know. Once they hear that you like those charm squares, people just keep sending them, don't they? That's funny. Which is a good thing. Because your latest quilt with those charm squares, I love. That is a keeper. So who has guessed what happened in 1990? In Europe, 150 feet under the sea. Yep, the channel between England and France was connected. And I'm going to read you a little bit about it. So, in 1990, on this same day, December 1st, shortly after 11 a.m., and 132 feet below the English Channel, workers drilled an opening the size of a car through a wall of rock. And it was no ordinary hole. It connected two ends of an underwater tunnel, linking Great Britain with the European mainland for the first time in more than 8,000 years. Now, of course, I read that and I thought, so 8,000 years ago, there mustn't have been water there. There must have been some land connection. That's all I could think of. And, uh, and it has eroded away. Anyway, and how do they know that? But that's for another day. It says the Channel Tunnel, or Channel, was not a new idea. In fact, it was suggested to Napoleon Bonaparte as early as 1802. It wasn't until the late 20th century, though, that the necessary technology was developed. And in 1986, Britain and France signed a treaty authorizing the construction of the tunnel running between Folkestone, England, and Calais, France. So I'm curious, Carol, if you've been through the tunnel or if anyone else has been through the tunnel. Now I'm very curious because I read this further and I'm going to read it to you and it doesn't take long to go through. So get this. It took four years, nearly 13,000 workers, and they dug 95 miles of tunnels at an average depth of 150 feet below sea level. Eight million cubic meters of soil were removed at the rate of 2,400 2, tons per hour. Holy cow. The completed channel would have three inter interconnected tubes, including one rail track in each direction and one service tunnel, and it cost $15 billion back in 1990. That day in 1990 on December 1st, the workers, after they drilled the final hole, they exchanged French and British flags and toasted each other with champagne. I like that. Final construction, though, took more than four years after that, and the Channel Tunnel finally opened for passenger service on May 6, 1994, and Queen's, Queen Elizabeth, Britain's Queen Elizabeth II, and France's President Francois Mitterrand were in Cali, and they took a ride on the inaugural run, which is cool. Um, the regular shuttle train through the tunnel runs 31 miles in total. Now get this, 23 are underwater, and it takes 20 minutes. That's it. And an additional 15-minute loop to turn the train around. That must be outside of the water. And wouldn't you think, in this day and age, do we have trains that, have, that go both ways? You'd think you should be able to go both ways. Anywho, that is my train experience. That's, that's the, the extent of my knowledge. But the channel is the second largest rail tunnel in the world after the Seikan Tunnel in Japan. So that happened back in 1990. And who's out there? Hmm. My phone has, the battery's been running down very fast. Okay, so I, oh, it was Karen's text again about the charm box. Okay, so let's keep going here. Oh. Okay. Almost done. And then I'm going to check 
are, no, I guess I could start the paper piecing, couldn't I? Because I have, a, I have to get a lot of this done and it's December 1st and I don't want to do it every fiber cast. That would be kind of boring. I want to do something fun next week. Not that this isn't fun. This is good. It's relaxing. We're unwinding from the week. But it would be fun to do something maybe Christmassy or make a, a basket in preparation for our basket quilt. Okay, there's the third one. I will put that down. <laughs> oh, oh, I haven't told anyone this. I have to tell you this. So last night after all my, my business meetings and my travels and I'd gotten up early in the morning to fly down, right? And then I had meetings and then I had dinner. And I get back into my, this has never happened to me. I open up my hotel door to go in and for the most part when I'm traveling, I feel very safe. I really do. I've had, I've been very lucky or naive, whatever, whatever it is. I walk in and the bathroom, it was a courtyard Marriott, nothing fancy. I walk in and the bathroom is over to the left and the bed straight ahead. I look over and I kid you not, my bath, the, the toilet was running and filling as if someone had just flushed it. So at first I was thought, oh, well, something's running. It's okay. You know, something's broken. So I went over without giving it a thought. And I opened up the top of the toilet and the bowl was half full. And I touched what was filling the bowl like that just a little bit. I thought, oh, I'm going to have to call down and tell them, tell maintenance that I have this running toilet and move me to another room or come fix it. And I thought that's all I want. It was 10 o'clock at night. So I put the, the cover back on and I walked out and then it stopped running. Now, which was made sense because the bowl was half full and it was still running and the, the water itself was going down like someone had just flushed the toilet, right? So it filled up and it stopped. And then it dawned on me what if someone was in the room? I've never done this before. So I checked, <laughs> I picked up a wastebasket and I went over to the door and I basically checked every spot where someone could have been hiding. And I had my wastebasket like a bat, you know, and I had, I knew exactly if someone moved, I, I knew exactly where I was going to get to the door to get out of the room. Ridiculous. If someone had had a camera watching this crazy lady with a wastebasket, I, so nope, there was no, no one in the shower. So that was number one. I came out. Nope, there was no one in the closet. Number two. Nope, there was no one under the sink. Number three, I go out to where the bed is. I look under the bed. Nope, it's a platform bed. So there's no one that can fit under there. And then I look straight ahead at a full wall of windows with drapes. And I swear to you, I thought one of the drapes was puffed out. At which point I threw, no, I didn't really throw. That's, that's an exaggeration. I walked over and I started hitting the drapes with my wastebasket to make sure there wasn't someone behind them. Isn't that, have you ever been in that situation? <laughs> Needless to say, I don't know quite what had happened. But the toilet didn't stop running and I didn't have to call maintenance and I was asleep within 20 minutes. <laughs> All fun. Okay, so C6 is ready for hand sewing. And I know it looks a little funky. I'll, I'll the hiccups. 
I'll place it so it looks better. This is called Ashley's Aura. Okay, and this one. Oh, Jean, I know. So Jean says, glad you are safe. Next time, run out, don't check. Okay, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> but then what would I do? Oh, I'd go down to the front desk, wouldn't I? And I'd say, could someone come up and check my room? Very smart. Ooh. Okay. Okay, C6. How are you, Jean, by the way? I love these glue sticks. Okay, what else are we going to say here? So this also was done, uh, prepared for hand applique on December 1 on Fibercast. Oh, and our new viewer. I'm going to put our new viewer's first name down. I try not to say your last names just for your own privacy. And I apologize. I know I just read it. Jennifer. Jennifer K. I'm so glad you're out there. I cannot wait to see your dear dream quilt. And we had a new and welcome, I'm going to say, welcome to a new viewer. Jennifer. K in Oak Ridge, North Carolina. Won't the historians have fun with that? <laughs> My new best friend, should I say that? No, I'm kidding. Oh, Jean, it has been quite a week, hasn't it? And how is it already December? Amen. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I just saw a few more people out there. Let's take a look before I start the next one. I'm really psyched. Look at this. I know this is false, a false sense of accomplishment, but check this out. None of them are done, but they're on their way. <laughs> Yay. Okay, one, two, three. And I think I saw Kathleen out there again. Let's see. She says, hi, Lynn, again. I did see you out there. Oh, Sue Norton, Sue N's blocks are lovely. I'm way behind. Hope to get a few finished and catch up. Aw. Thanks for answering my question and showing me Sue's raw edge. Of course. Of course. Glad you're out there. Oh, and Leah. Hello. Color Wheel Mystery Quilt. So Leah says, hi, Lynn and Fibercasters. Oh, I haven't we haven't seen you in a few weeks, have we? She says, happy Friday. I'm working on adding a flan strip. On the ooh, a flange strip, a little tea. Nice flange strip. I'll keep going and I'll be quiet. On the color wheel mystery quilt. Thought it could use the teal to frame it. Then we'll add the scrappy binding like the pattern indicated. Also, I quilted it using my first pantograph. It came out pretty good for my first try. I bet it came out amazingly well. Have a good weekend, Leah. Oh, here's the picture. Here is the picture. Oh, that's awesome. So, oh, look at you, and I can see the quilting. That's wonderful. Okay. So that, that little strip of teal is what, maybe an inch thick that you fold it in half, so now it's half an inch. And then when you sew it inserted into the edge, it may show a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch of that pretty teal to totally frame the quilt. I think that's a great idea. Do you ever do prairie points? I wonder if we could do a variation on prairie points. That might be fun to play with sometime. Or rickrack, that big, thick rickrack. Catch half of it around the edge. It'd be scallopy. I really like that. And congratulations on your quilting. That's great. Oh. 
Okay. Well, let's set up for one more block. And then I think I'm going to call it for the night. Let's get ready, though. I think I don't have anything else to, to say. Oh, I know. If Sandra's out there. Hi, Sandra in Mississippi. I have been meaning to open this up. So back when Bob got hurt, Sandra sent this along with just a lovely prayer bookmark. And I've been meaning to pull out and use the fabric she sent to me. And I remember opening it one night after coming home from the hospital and it was such a treat. All of you, everyone sent treats. So what if we use this? I want to use it in my Dear Jane quilt so it's always there. And the question is, hmm, I should have used it for that one. But So let me just check. Before I cut it up into really small pieces, maybe there's another bigger applique piece that, yep. Oh, no, that's done. Okay, hang on. Hey, I found it. I'm going to use it for D6, the challenge, I think. Yeah. D6. So I'm going to use this fabric. A big square of it and then I'm just going to take some white and do the little side pieces. Yay! And then I'll have a piece of Sandra's fabric in my quilt. In fact, let's see if I can iron it. Now that one I learned a trick from Tim Natar. Jean and Kelsey brought Tim Natar into our guild, and we did that map quilt. And the way that Tim Natar taught us to make the roads is part machine and part hand. And I'm going to show you, and I'm going to do it here on this one. Let's see. So it's four pieces. I just dropped my probably too big. Now you can see just how scrappy I work. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that is way too thick. And not straight, but okay. And do that and this so it's about an inch and that might even be too wide oh, I think that'll work so now what you do take this piece that's say an inch inch wide and then iron it in half just like you're going to use it as a flange So there's that. Let's put this aside. Then we are going to cut this piece. So again, I've jumped ahead and I'm on D6, the challenge block. And I'm going to cut this a little bit bigger just in case. Oh, these scissors are awful. And you're thinking it's because you cut paper with them. It could be. OK, 
Okay. That's still big. Hm. Things you do when you don't have the right tools right here in front of you. Okay, let's say that's about the right size. Now, I'm going to cut these into four. I mean, Jane was working by candlelight probably at night after all her chores were done. You cannot tell me she was measuring this very finely. So I'm just gonna pretend I'm kind of like her with like so. So then, now I take this flange type thing and sew it down on one side, quarter of an inch in, and then I'm gonna fold it over and hand sew on the other side. What I mean? Hmm. The iron is making noise. Oh, I'm glad we could do that. So Sandra, I've gotten your fabric in this quilt. I've been meaning to do this. Okay, so there are the four pieces. Now what I'm going to do, I'm move this back over just a little. This is going to be perfect. I'm going to finish this up and then say good night for another week. I'm so glad everyone could join me. Mostly because it means hopefully you're doing something you love during this very busy time of the year when we always are thinking about what we're doing for other people. Remember, you can only fully give to other people when you take care of yourself, too. Okay, so now, just like Tim Natar showed us, so I have my four pieces. Now what I'm going to do is take it over to the iron. Oh, I can let me just cut this. I'm going to iron it flat like this. And then I'll be able to hand sew it. And I'll show you what I mean. Whew, I love this to iron. Okay. And there that is. And which one is this? So this is D6. We are cranking. I want to thank everyone for joining me on if you're not started, if you haven't started a Dear Jane journey, I highly recommend it. It's fun. It's always a go-to project that it will take years, usually, unless you're Sue. No, it will take much less. And I just want to say hi to everyone. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you next week, 8 p.m. Eastern on a Friday night, and it will be December 8th. Wow. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.